Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Taking another person's item without permission, but you know deep down that he really doesn't mind. A good friend of yours has a number of writing paper by his desk. He's not around. Can you take the paper without asking his permission, assuming that he won't mind and he'll for sure give you permission, or a friend of yours has some food stashed away. And you're a little hungry. Can you take some of the food assuming he won't mind? As you know that anyways, if you were to ask him, he would let. So in the previous lesson on this subject, we already discussed and determined that in general, it's forbidden to take someone's item without permission, even if you plan on giving it back. It's called She'el Shalei Midas, which is stealing. Nevertheless, if you know for certain that the person won't mind, it is permitted to do so. So seemingly the same should apply here. If you know for certain your friend doesn't mind you taking his food or taking his paper or anything of the like, it should be permitted. However, when you look into the sources in the Paiskin, we find a very interesting contradiction. Our previous statement that if you know for certain he doesn't mind, then it's for permitted to take the item, is written in the Shulchanach of the Alter Rebbe Hilchus Shelev is Chirus Halacha 5, based on the ruling of the Ramah. However, in a different halacha, in Hilchus Metziu Pekad Halacha for the Alter Rebbe writes, that one may never benefit from another person's item without his knowledge, even if one knows for certain that his friend will not mind. An exact contradiction to his lenient and permitting ruling in the previous mentioned source. So after a careful analysis in the two areas, we come to the following conclusion regarding practical halacha. There's a difference in halacha between taking an item from your friend without permission to use and then give back in the same state. I'm just borrowing its usage. And between taking an item and keeping it to yourself under the premises that your friend doesn't mind. In the former case, it's permitted if you know for a fact your friend doesn't mind, while in the latter case, the al rules, it's forbidden even if you know for certain your friend doesn't mind. The words of the al even if one knows for certain that when he tells the owner that he took the item, the owner will rejoice and be happy due to the great love they share, it is nevertheless forbidden to benefit from without the owner's knowledge. And the al then gives an example. That thus it is forbidden to enter the orchard or garden of a friend of yours, a good friend, and collect from the produce without the owner's explicit permission, even if the owner of the orchard is a very close friend of yours who you know will be so happy to find out that you helped yourself to some of his fruits. Nevertheless, since right now the owner is unaware, it's considered stealing. And the al concludes here in this statement that one is required to publicize this matter to the public, which is what we're doing right now, as many people transgress this without asking permission of the owner due to lack of knowledge of the halacha. People think he's a very good friend of mine. I know for sure he won't mind, so I'll take it. That's only if you're borrowing it and plan on returning it. If you're taking it and consuming it, a piece of paper you're writing on, you're using, you're not giving it back. The food you're eating, you're not uh, taking it out of your system anymore. In such cases, you must make the owner aware that you're taking his item before you do so. The al however, does give us two exceptions to this rule. The obligation to inform the owner before you take his item, even when you know for certain that he doesn't mind, is only in a case where this has not become the public practice of people to allow such a thing to be taken by others, and this hasn't occurred that often with this friend. If, however, it's already the public practice to allow such a thing to happen, or this friend has already asked the owner ten times in the past to take from the fruits, to take from the paper, and the owner always says, yes, you're my best friend, take. Then the eleventh time, he doesn't have to ask anymore. That's just an approximation of a number. The, the, the point is, if already the, the person knows the owner has been asked many times and less, then it becomes as if it's also an allowance for the future. Certainly, if the owner says, help yourself for whatever you are, then certainly it's allowed. Based on this, we can understand why the following case scenario is not considered stealing, despite what we just clarified above. You're the owner of your house. You're not home. Your son or daughter brings a friend over, and they eat some of your food in your house. They're talking, they're schmoozing, and they're eating some pretzels. Is that considered stealing? The friend of your son or daughter never asked you permission. Your son or daughter aren't owners in this home. They are dependents. They don't have any ownership. They can't delegate money, assets, products to someone else without your permission. So that friend that's eating food in your home without telling you, even though of course you would say yes, seemingly goes against the halacha we said that many people aren't aware. 
But based on the second clarification, we understand that it's mutter. Since it's a public practice for people to allow their friends, allow their children to bring friends over, and to allow the, those friends to be honored with some food, therefore it is mutter to be done even without asking explicit permission from the parents. It's therefore also allowed for someone going around doors collecting money to receive a donation from the wife or child, even though whose money really is it, the husband's. And such a thing is already the minhag, and when it's the minhag, it's as if the husband explicitly gave permission to begin with for this to be allowed to be done. So to summarize, it's forbidden to borrow someone's item without permission, without informing him first, whether simply to use it or to use it and give it back. Or to use it and keep it for oneself, such as borrowing a piece of paper or borrowing some food which you're going to eat. However, if you know for certain that the owner doesn't mind, then if you plan on returning it in the same state, it's mutter. If you plan on consuming it and not returning it, then it's usser unless you ask permission from the owner. If, however, you've already asked many times and he said yes, or it's a common practice among society to allow such things, then you don't even have to inform the owner beforehand, even if you're going to be consuming the item. Thank you for listening to shuhanarcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work through making even a small contribution at shuhanarcharav.com under the daily halacha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many safarim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.